Hello everybody, this is the Optical Vampire, and today we're going to be doing a video is illustrating how to use Blender as a video editor. I've sped this video up two times because it's about 15 minutes long and I want to keep it under 10. So just uh, keep an eye on what's going on. So let's get started. So first I'm setting the, uh, the, the form to um, HD 720p. 30 frames per second, which is uh, the default for iPhone, and uh, loading in a couple of video clips. These are already done in from the iPhone, which is in 720p. Now, to move to, to highlight the clips, you right-click on them, and to move them, you press G and then drag them back and forth. Now we're going to create a couple of titles, <coughs> and I'm using the GIMP for the titles. Now, one of the things I'm going to do in the video here is uh, create a drop shadow. And the reason for doing the drop shadow is you want your text to be able to stand out from the background, particularly if you've got a single color text like this, uh, which is just white. If you could put a border around it, that's fine too, but I think the uh, the drop shadow looks nice, plus it's also um, a one click away in, in the GIMP, so there you go, there's your drop shadow, and that helps the text stand out. Now, when you want uh, your text to, to drop over top, you need to select, um, well, you select pre-multiply so that it does the alpha blending, and then you select alpha over so that the uh, the other image shows through in the black parts. <clears throat> the reason I added the color strip was so that I could do what I'm doing right here, which is a, a fade in. You can't fade in from nothing. You have to fade in from at least a color or from another clip. So by, by setting the, um, the opacity at uh, the first frame and then some way in from 0 to 1, we create an opacity blend, which is how we do the, the fade in and the fade out. Uh, you create a keyframe, by the way, by setting a value, like I was doing on the opacity slider, and then pressing I on the keyboard. That creates a keyframe and it turns the button yellow. If the button's green, that, that lets you know that the, uh, this is a keyframed value, but that you're not currently on a keyframe. And what I'm doing here is I'm creating a, a cross uh, crossfade and the crossfade goes between two clips and the, the entire area of the two clips so that's why I trimmed the, the little the, the, um, the stopwatch one a little early here I'm shrinking it but then I realize that I don't even need it so hit X and you can drop the clip entirely now I'm finding an endpoint I'm gonna create a new endpoint and K will uh, K creates a soft cut which um, gives you room to to move the the, um, the end of the clip in and out or shift K creates a hard cut, which means you can no longer move it out anymore. So now I've created room for it to um, fade out <coughs> and fade in. So we've got we've got a fade in, we've got a, a title. Now I'm going to add a couple of a um, couple of more titles that that pop up in the middle here. basically exactly the same as I did earlier. I like the Ubuntu font, so I picked that one. You don't really have to be very precise about where you put the, uh, put the graphic, because um, you can always move it around once you get it in. Oh, and also, Blender will scale the image to, to fit the screen. That's why I'm opening a full 1280 by 720 for these uh, for these titles. Even though the title is small, this allows Blender to know what size it's supposed to be scaled at. Otherwise, um, the you know the he's fast or the cute no would fill up the whole screen, and you'd have to apply a scale to get it down to the proper size. So this allows you to control how big it's going to be once it actually gets in. And I also didn't notice that I had an extra there. So we've got the two titles now. Now we've got to set pre-multiply and alpha over so that they actually drop over top of the, the graphic beneath. If you don't set pre-multiply, it just ends up looking really chunky and gross. Because the, um, the anti-aliasing that GIMP does doesn't show up. So always set pre-multiply, but on the but do not send do not set convert to float. Blender has a bug that uh, causes your animation to basically stop at the end of the clip if you use convert to float. 
So here again, same thing, click on it, set to zero, hit I, move to a new frame, hit I, or set the value, then hit I. And also up in the uh, the graph window there, you can see the, um, the curve being created, the transition curve. You, you can uh, make them disappear by clicking the checkbox. Right click on these two and hit G to move them down. And then control right click to create a new point. So this is how you can ed edit the curves directly. So that's <coughs> a slightly more complex, a uh, slightly more complex cross blend. Now here I want to move the, uh, I want to actually move the clip. So to do that I needed to apply a transformation effect. And the clips are displayed from top to bottom and I don't actually want to display the untransformed one. That's why I hit it below the, uh, the displayed clip. So the transformed one is now the one that will be shown over top. Now to move, you just click into the X or Y field and drag left and right and that will let you that acts as a slider. That's what I'm doing here. I'm just dragging left and right. I'm trying to find good points. Or you can just click in the middle and type in a value, which is what I end up doing here. And then press I, of course. Always press I to create your keyframe at whatever value you've just done. And there we have overlapping fading or fading titles. I found XVID works much better. The, uh, for some reason, H.264, I was getting choppy video. It would, it would stutter, whereas XVID seemed smooth all the way through. So uh, pick XVID, and also don't forget to go into encoding and pick a, a, an audio encoding, or you get no audio, and MP3 seems to work. And uh, that's the video. So thank you for watching.